here today with Mac and Caitlin. Sylvie, do you, you prefer McLean or Mac? Mac works. McLean's your business name. <laughs> <laughs> that goes on the email signature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, they are so important to us. Uh, Caitlin was our very first <clears throat> student president uh, back when we were Impact Christian Fellowship. She actually drafted our very first constitution, which I, I still have. And uh, we used it to form our new one and awesome. um, really appreciate them so much. And so I just thought maybe I could ask you a few questions today to let everybody know what you've been up to. Yeah, definitely. Cool. The first thing is just to let us know what you've been doing since you've been, since you graduated. What, what year did you graduate, Caitlin? Oh man, I think I graduated at the end of 2015 because I graduated a semester early. Uh, Mac and I were married at the time. We'd been married for like a year and a half. And we moved straight down to Dallas, Texas to start working with Pioneer Bible Translators. Wow. That's right. Uh, yeah. So we, we worked with PBT in the U.S. for two years getting training. And then we went overseas to Papua New Guinea for another couple of years. And we've literally just gotten back to the United States after our first term. Um, so we're here partially because of the virus, but also partially because... It was time. It was time for our furlough to be up. And we've been updating churches and talking to friends and just letting them know how God's ministry has been going these last two years overseas. Yeah. yeah. And, and Mac, you want to share uh, what you, you've been doing the same thing, apparently, since you guys are married. Yeah. Most of, mostly we kind of hang out together. Yeah. We're always <laughs> together. Um, we, and work, together. we work in the same office and go on a lot of the same trips in yeah. Papua. So we yeah. really are together a lot, um, probably more than most married couples. But while Caitlin was doing her training in Dallas, her linguistic training, I was doing work with the IT team. So modern day Bible translation isn't quite like locking yourself in a room like Martin Luther did and just writing everything out. There are aspects of that, especially out in the, the sure. villages. But a lot of it requires some serious translation uh, computing power. So almost all of our translation teams um, in all over the world use quite a few laptops for every translation. So they wow. can type, they can uh, collaborate. I can't. English is hard. Side note, I've been trying to, to switch back to English and I am struggle <laughs> busting and I know <laughs> If I can't do the, like, if I can't speak a good sentence, it's, I'm going to use that as my excuse. It's not. <laughs> it's <all good. laughs> um, so Bible translation in 2020 and beyond requires a lot of computing power. So I've been doing the IT side of that um, right. in America and in Papua New Guinea. Mm -hmm. You got a linguist and a IT specialist. Yep. Right here. So, and the cool thing was, is since I met you guys, you had always, uh, that was in 2015, no, 2013 that we started the ministry. Wow. And so since 2013, when I met you, Caitlin, that's, you had already started to talk about saying, you know, I'm a, this is my major and this is what I want to do with it. And, you know, sometimes you meet someone and they say that they would like to do something and follow through with it and they don't always yeah. do that. So <laughs> mad to you both for following through on that and um, just allowing God to, to use you and, and use your lives. And, and, and another cool thing about this is that not everybody is called into full time vocational ministry like you guys are, but there are some that are, you know, that, that are called to, to full time vocational ministry. And so I think something good for our students and uh, everyone here today and our alumni is that 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 isn't outside of what God could do in your life. Like He could call you into full time vocational ministry, mm -hmm. or He could call you to, to work at a company uh, or whatever. Um, but God's going to use you wherever you're at. But I think that we we need to remind our students and alumni that that's never off the table with God. Like He could He can call you to do whatever He would want you to do. So. Yeah, and it's not necessarily set right when you grab that diploma and walk off the stage. We have a whole host of second career missionaries on our team yeah. who have done careers in the United States and been called to use those skills 
overseas or in serving the organization from from the home base. So. Right. That's that's what I was going to say. Like, yeah, it's been really awesome to go straight from um, for you to go straight from college. For me, I had a few years in in corporate world and then just jump straight into doing missions. And I've I've loved that opportunity, but it's also been really cool to work on a team with people who spent 20, 30 years doing work in America and then brought all of those ex experiences and skills and um, knowledge to the work of Bible translation. It's made for a really diverse team. So hmm. uh, what you said is absolutely true. Some people may just know, like, I'm called to full-time ministry. Like, this is what God has wanted me to do since I was in kindergarten. Right. And that's super cool. But like Caitlin said, it's not necessarily set in stone either like you could have an incredibly successful corporate career and then be called into something else for the latter half of your life or even the majority of your life sure i think that's great gotta be open to yeah what God to do more he's our lord jesus is our lord and savior so he gets to decide when our, our job is to be obedient um so what would you say is the most impactful lesson uh, that being a part of CSF? Of course, it was impact when you guys were with us. You're still with us. We, we claim impactful. you. Um, yeah. yeah you, uh, during your time. And I know, Caitlin, you were in those formational years. Uh, so we were, we were not uh, very large. Yeah. Uh, maybe with Mac, we, we may have risen our attendance by 33% when he was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so, what, what lesson do you think? Uh, what lessons do you think God uh, used CSF to teach you guys? Yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Actually, sort of the legacy of um, of what saying yes can bring. Mm -hmm. um, not that I claim that anything that's happening in CSF is a result of me, but by by being a part of it at the beginning, I I get to experience some of the blessing of seeing those baptisms or those weddings or all those things that happen now as a result of Christian yeah. Student Fellowships Ministry. Um, but yeah, one of the things I was really pondering was just how important prayer was at the beginning. We mm -hmm. kind of had this vision of trying to reach the students at IUPUI, but we didn't know how to do that. You know, we had we had an adult leader, a couple student volunteers, and a big blank canvas of schedule and um, you know there it was all very uncertain and unsure and yeah. one of the things the Lord just sort of pressed me to do in that first year was just walk around the campus and pray I'd walk all the way from my apartment on the river all the way up to West Street and just pray for each department pray for the students that were learning in all of those um, all those different departments for the things that God was going to use out of this campus and just asked him to direct where the ministry was going to go um, and it's really incredible to see what he's done with the resources that that we had, you know, kind of our loaves and fish, how he's really spread that out to touch a lot of students' lives. Um, so, yeah, the importance of prayer at the beginning, just like putting it in God's hands, like we have this idea, but God, you're the one who's going to make it happen. So, right. so And there were just so many things that happened that were apparently out of our control uh, that we had not planned on. Right. You know, we had all these little small little ideas as to what we thought would happen. And then God completely uh, we I interviewed Zach Trion for our very first uh, alumni interview and met him at a funeral dinner. Uh, you know, it was just like all these wild connections and how God brought uh, all these students. And then you get involved in Horizon uh, Christian Fellowship, that church uh, near Fountain Square. and and how that partnership really blessed um, our ministry in a big way. Um, and it's just wild how God, God already knew all that was going to happen and yeah. how he was going to do a great work. And so I'm um, just super impressed with God. I, I don't know how I could, <laughs> that's kind of the understatement of the year. Yeah. But, and, and you kind of answered the follow-up question. Do you use that? In your life today and I, I think we need to also take that into account to say we need to continue to pray yeah you have that kind of vision moving forward especially in today's climate 
when getting space on campus is pretty much impossible yeah. mm -hmm. because of all the things that are happening on campus. Um, so how, how do you use the, these kind of lessons that you learned uh, in your life today? Um, and how does that kind of affect how you do ministry in Papua New Guinea in Bible translation? Um, yeah, um, we, we're we always learning that prayer is such a huge part of making ministry happen. Somehow, you know, even though you know that intuitively, it seems like such a basic thing. Sometimes right. you forget it and you steam right on ahead anyways, and you just start straight into the planning mm -hmm. phase. Um, but one of the times recently that God was reminding me of how significant prayer is for um, every aspect of life, not just ministry, was when we were stuck in PNG for about a month. Um, when coronavirus hit, a lot of other nations decided to close their borders. And so even though we were free to leave Papua New Guinea, there was nowhere for us to go. Connecting um, through a nightmare. Yeah, there was, was, there was no, no getting out. <laughs> there was no getting out. Um, our our president had called us to be in daily prayer and i had kind of casually followed that um but our 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 local leader our director said no we're gonna have prayer time every day um mm -hmm. every day that we're in the office we're gonna meet together at 11 a.m and we're gonna pray um mm -hmm. we had 11 prayer points which you know kind of felt a little bit silly we're reading off a paper and we've got these 11 points that mm -hmm. after day three we had memorized nobody yeah. needed the paper anymore yeah. But um, just the habit and the repetition of, of sitting down and submitting to God and saying, we can't solve these things. We can't solve the virus. We can't solve the travel. We can't solve, like, we can't protect every person on earth from this, but you can. Right. That mm -hmm. practice and that habit really put me in a better space to come back once things opened up. And I, yeah, and I, I don't think... It wasn't intentional, but I, I realized in that time that we hadn't been relying on God as much as we thought we had been because mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we had all of these safety blankets. We had like the, the opportunity to medevac if we needed to. We could get to Australia if we needed to. We had all kinds of resources. And when coronavirus hit, like the hospital locked down, the wow. city locked down. Like we couldn't leave our town, we couldn't leave the country, and there was no other country that was willing to like even let us pass through to get back to America. And that made those daily prayers so much more essential. Right. Like, that it, it went from like, oh yeah, we, we're supposed to pray because we're Christians. We should probably <laughs> do that because like that's what missionaries do, right? To like, no, I have to do this. Like that's my only option. Mm -hmm. right. God is it. And I would never wish that situation on anyone. I would never wish this whole pandemic on anyone. But man, the the calling back to God and the utter reliance on God to provide even a way to get back home has been remarkable for my faith. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. Uh, and I, I was... Uh... I was having lunch with B.J. Bungard, your guys' uh, former youth minister, uh, Mount yeah. Gilead Christian Church, and this was a few months ago, of course. And uh, he said he had just come back from seeing you guys not too too long after that. He was like, "You won't believe how remote they are." <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man, it's we, true. Uh, we didn't even take him to the remote places. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> you guys just get used to it, and that's just your home. And for him, going from Mooresville to yeah. Papua New Guinea was like major, major respect for you guys. And, and it oh, was man. really neat to hear him ex explaining like exactly how ministry was happening and how he was so excited. And and uh, people are really excited about what you guys are doing and they really believe in you. And it's been kind mm -hmm. of neat to see. Um, kind really of, you have that, you have that, that personal calling and then when god really starts to flesh that out it starts to affect so many other people not just in papua new guinea but in the united states uh, inspirationally i mean it, mm. it helps us to continue to go and i tell you guys a story all the time to students uh, it's really encouraging for them to hear so uh if you if you could ha give any in advice to incoming freshmen uh, what what advice would you give them other than uh, have a map handy, 
right? Like uh, admissions, uh, you used to do campus tours. That's right, yeah. So you would have all kinds of factoids about the university. It was so nice having you. <laughs> I didn't even my think about that. Equipment. It would be like, poof, 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 like all these statistics. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have 32,000 students and 24 or so of them were undergrad. Anyways, um, <laughs> um, yeah, if I could if I could go back and do it again, I wish that I had had a more robust habit of spending time in the word. Um, I kind of felt like, you know, I'm in college. I've made it through high school. I've been in, you know, youth group and that kind of stuff all my life. I know what's in the Bible. I've read it through like twice. Um, and so like having a habit of reading the Bible felt really redundant to me at the time. Right. Um, and there were times when I would sit down and I'd study the word, but, but sitting down and reading it every day, like just sort of steeping in it, like, um, right. is, is really impactful. Uh, mm -hmm. it can make a huge difference on like, God just brings those verses bubbling up to your mind, um, right when you need them, as opposed to like, I'll go home and Google that because I remember there's a verse related to that, but I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You're like living by it. And uh, you're, you're, it's just like prayer. Like you guys were talking about, you go from like having all these backup plans to no black backup plan and the backup plan. Uh, the plan in general is just prayer. Right. Yeah. It should have been our plan in the first place, but <laughs> right. But you know, God has to do that with us. He has to make, get us down but let us really realize almost like a nebuchadnezzar moment and to lift our eyes up to heaven and realize that he is the one that's in control and he's in charge um how about to a graduating senior what would you say to them uh, we just had 20 this past may we had 29 graduating seniors wow. uh, they're going all over the place and some of them are staying in indianapolis but what what advice would you give to them? I know your your situation has been a little bit different than a lot of them. So a lot of them will be that a lot of them are still decently close to their families. Um, but uh, what would what advice would you give to a graduating senior? I think don't neglect community, Christian community. Um, it's really easy when you're going through transition to just get really excited about the next thing, um, to really dive into like oh this new job, this new place that I'm living, but. Um, it's also really important to seek out a church community to find people who think and believe the same things that you do to really affirm, um, you know, who you are at the core, who Christ has has caused you to be. Mm. Um, and yeah, there there were times when I was kind of like, I'm so excited. I'm in Papua New Guinea. Like, I don't need to keep up with people back home. And I missed, you know, I missed chunks of their life and opportunities where we could have sharpened each other in that moment during that transition. And it's not that you have to keep in contact with everyone all the time, but yeah. um, definitely like having a core of people who affirm your values can really help you to stay steady on your walk with Christ. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I wanted to also give space here at the end of our time just to allow you guys to kind of give a pitch for Bible translation. I'm sure that uh, no matter what organization it is, Pioneer Bible Translators or Wycliffe or whomever, I know you guys are kind of working collaboratively now, uh, yeah. not kind of like, hey, here's what Pioneer's doing. This is what Wycliffe's doing. But you guys are kind of pooling your resources to, to accomplish the, the ultimate goal of translating scripture. And just tell us maybe where we're at as far as how many languages there are left. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was looking this up the other day. I should have this memorized. <laughs> I can tell you in Papua New Guinea alone, we work in a single province within Papua New Guinea, like a state. Um, we have 15 language projects going in our province, and we've identified that 80 still need to be done just wow. in one state, in one country. Um, and one of the other big fields that we're discovering that really needs to be done is signed languages. Now, um, when you translate into a sign language, you're not necessarily like writing down scripture, but Sure. Each sign language has its own nuances, its own vocabulary, its own way of expressing words mm. and terms. And those are scattered all around the world. And yeah. at this point, we don't even have a single Bible for a signed language that's been completely recorded. And so wow. that's a huge field that has yet to be done, that yeah. um, a people group that the Lord's still trying to reach. We had someone in 
um, come to visit us in Papua New Guinea, who is a, a sign language interpreter. And she went to visit a deaf community that is in town near us. And she was just blown away by some of the, the similarities to American sign language, but also like how they had developed their own unique vocab signed vocabulary independent wow. from anywhere else in the world. And like, this is a sign language that's still developing because a lot of times deaf people were isolated in one group or another. And the, just recently they've been able to get together and develop a Papua New Guinean sign language. And it's, she just couldn't stop going over, going crazy about how awesome it was to see a language forming for the first time. Wow. So that's, that's, awesome. that's, it's an area that because it's essentially an unreached people group that have not had the Bible in their language, but they're not in one location. Like you can't say, Oh, all the deaf people live in Papua New Guinea. Like mm -hmm. there are deaf people all over the world who need to have the Bible in their language. Um, and, and that's part of our wider goal of like, like you were saying earlier, Wycliffe, SIL, Pioneer Bible Translators, United Bible Society, like all of us together, regardless of denomination or background, want people to have the Bible in their language. We want them to be able to read the gospel for themselves because no matter how good your pastor is, no mm -hmm. matter how awesome your church service is that's a couple hours of your week if you go every single week right. and you have a long service um, yeah. it will never replace being able to read the bible when you wake up when you go to bed when you're on your lunch break for yourself uh, right. it just can't and my own life is evidence of that like, i can't I don't like the person I am if I've just like decided I don't feel like reading the Bible today. <laughs> um, it transforms my life and we want other people to be able to experience that no matter what language they speak. So the goal for all Bible translation organizations is to have at least the gospel translated. Is it the gospel or the whole New Testament? The whole New Testament. Translated into every uh, active language in the world by 2050. Wow. Uh, it's kind of an, okay, I won't even say kind of. It's an incredibly ambitious goal. It's one of those goals right. that unless God shows up and is part of it, it's not going to happen. Right. Right. But we feel strongly that people deserve to read about Jesus and to read the gospel in the language that they understand so that they can come to know saving faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a life or death thing. Right. And really want people to be able to experience it in a language that they can understand. Right. So yeah, it's a big deal and it's going to take a bit, but we are part of it. Wow. Love it. And so I, I think that that uh, this is something everybody should seriously consider, whether it's supporting financially supporting missionaries that are doing Bible translation or uh, considering doing it themselves. So um, thank you guys so much for taking some time uh, to answer these questions and kind of weigh in and be an encouragement. And thank you for all the pioneer work. Uh, I just wanted to share real quick, uh, Mac and I, when we <laughs> Well, he would come and help us, even though oh, yeah. we were all over the place, and we would have these nights of worship, and we would only have like two a semester at that point. Yeah. And uh, every time we would always order pizza, and the pizza person could never find us on campus. They they would be coming from why it was so hard. <laughs> away, and they couldn't find us, and so this poor soul driving up and down Michigan, and inevitably Mac and I would be out there running down Michigan trying to catch the pizza guy. <laughs> So it was really, I just have so many fun memories of <laughs> and tearing down and loading out late at night. And yeah. sometimes we'd have the turnout that we were wanting and sometimes it wouldn't be. And, you know, and it was just so up and down. And at the time I was full time at a church and we were kind of, Caitlin and I would have to communicate on the phone when we did communicate because I wouldn't be there in person. And, mm -hmm. Anyway, I just really thank you guys so much for laying that groundwork, and it's kind of cool to see what God's done uh, since 2013. Absolutely. And
thank you for being a part of that. Let me close by uh, praying for you guys and, and praying for our alumni, and then we'll, we'll be done. Uh, God, thank you so much for today. We thank you for Jesus, uh, who ultimately paid the price on the cross and gave us freedom, uh, gave us the opportunity uh, to be saved. And I know that that's your heartbeat for every single human being on, on the planet. Uh, but God, unless they have uh, your word in their language uh, to where they can, like, like Mac was saying, be able to, to go home on, on their lunch break or in the evening and spend time in your word personally, um, that's uh, where that true firsthand experience with you happens. Um, yeah, we just, we really want to see more of that happen. So we pray just for um, a blessing upon Mac and Caitlin as they continue to work. Uh, God, that you would open up all kinds of really cool opportunities that you'd allow them to get back to their work when they're supposed to. Um, thank you for all the stuff that they're doing right now to raise awareness uh, of what you're doing throughout the world and in Papua New Guinea. God, we love you. We thank you for Jesus, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you guys so much. Yeah, for thank you for inviting us. Yeah, it's fun.